Hey everyone, this is David Verbruggen with you again. Um, this is going to be the second tutorial on helping you get your charts by Tradeway platform set up, helping you learn how to use some of the basic functions of charts by Tradeway. If you haven't seen the first one yet, go ahead and check that out. Um, that one, we went over some good things on how to uh, just navigate around the platform, how to get some settings uh, set up, how to insert your uh, virtual account. So uh, go ahead and check that one out. Uh, right now, we're going to go ahead and show you some more on the watch list. So I'm going to come up here to the watch tab. I'm going to click here, and uh, I'm going to show you how to create a new personal watch list. So in order to do that, sometimes I need to go ahead and refresh. You see that, how there wasn't all these buttons available? Sometimes. There's some browser data that gets stuck because we're working on browsers, which has some advantages. Um, sometimes it gets stuck. So you just got to do a quick refresh and it'll bring up some additional um, options for you here. Now we want to go ahead and create a new watch list. So I, you can see here, I hovered over and it says add delete watch list. I want to add one. Um, and a couple things it's going to make you do is going to have you put in a symbol first, right? I don't know what symbol I want to add in yet. So I put in .spx. That's kind of my, my go-to. This is what's going to anchor, right? Every watch list needs to have at least one ticker in there. So I just put in .spx, and that's kind of the anchor. So now I can continue and move forward. Um, you can name your watch list. I'm just going to name it my favorite watch list for now, just to create something here, right? And now I'm going to create that watch list. And here we go. It shows up right here. Now, one of the things that I like to do is come to the David Mitchell watch list. And maybe I want to choose David Mitchell stocks. And I can copy all these tickers into my personal watch list. I'm going to show you why this is important. Uh, this is going to allow you to see all these tickers right next to the chart itself. This is going to be pretty good. So we're going to select. I want to make sure I'm not moving too fast here. I want to click the checkbox button here. And come back over here. And right next to symbol, I'm going to click that box. It's going to highlight all these guys. I want to just take this entire David Mitchell stocks watch list and put it in my favorite watch list. Then I can go to the chart and just start looking through the watch list and looking through for pretty patterns. So when I have them all selected, I want to come to the arrow that's pointing to the right. I'm going to send the symbols to a selected watch list. You click that, and I want to send it to my favorite watch list. Symbols have been added. Now I can come back to my favorite watch list. And I can see all these guys here. What that allow me to do is come back to the chart. And you can see where it says recent. This is kind of like a history. So Apple just comes up there automatically. Let's say I want to look at Nike. Yep, then that pops up and there's another one. Say I want to look at Southwest Airlines. There's another one. But I want to go ahead and see that new watch list I just created. So I click on recent and I can look at all the personal watch lists. You won't see the David Mitchell watch lists in here because system watch lists can't be edited, which is simply why I copied the system watch list into a private or my personal watch list so that I can edit this. So here we go. Here's my uh, my favorite watch list. You know, that, that's what it... Um, what I called it here. And I got all these tickers on the left here. And you can scroll through them all and see them all. From here, I can go ahead and just start looking through and finding pretty patterns and drawing some lines. Drawing the lines, of course, is going to be important so that we can see the patterns clearly. Let's start with this first one right here. And let's just draw a few lines that we can see. The line drawing tool is located right here. See where it says trend lines. If I click on that, I'm going to have several options. The one I use most is going to be lines. I select that. And what I want to do is click and release, drag my mouse, 
click and release. If you click and drag, what you're accidentally doing is wanting to zoom in. And then you're gonna get some weird looking thing. Don't freak out. Just come up here, click reset zoom. Brings you right back. Now, once you figure out, oh, I kind of like the zoom feature. Yes, you can click and drag a certain cross section and it'll zoom right into that and you can get a clear idea of what's going on. Once you're done, reset zoom. So here we've drawn a resistance line. We can grab another line, for example. Maybe we want to draw a potential support line. Once we're done with that, we can move on to another chart. Let's look at RMBS. Let's show some of the other drawing tools in here. What about array? What does the ray do? Array is going to go um, kind of to infinity. So if I start my line here, you can see how I now have, uh, we, we can put it right there. It's not gonna be a perfect line on the bottom, but I now have a line going to the left and to the right into infinity. The previous one, it was just, you know, there's a, a definite start and stop to the line. The ray just goes into infinity. Now I wanna show you real quick as well. Here it is, the parallel channel, okay? So let me show that in a second here, but I'm gonna go in, if I wanna get rid of a line, I'm gonna click this line and I'm going to delete that line. I want to do that so I can show you the parallel channel. Parallel channel is going to be like a line, but you can go ahead and automatically do uh, an exact parallel resistance and support if you want. Now I didn't I didn't draw this perfectly in here. It's not a not a perfect trend, and you may not like. Oh, I don't like how that looks red. Yeah, I don't either. That's okay. We can click on it, and we can change the background color, or even easier, just change the transparency all the way to the left, and then we'll get rid of that. So now it's fully transparent. And there's your parallel channel. All right, let's click on another one. Let's do some more of these. Uh, in here, so we looked at lines, rays, we've looked at parallel channels, horizontal line. I personally really like the horizontal line feature. I like to be able to bring the line right there and just do one click. One click, I get a perfectly horizontal line in, to infinity to the left and to the right. This is a great place to put that too. See how the support there on the massive gap down. That's kind of crazy, actually. That's a pretty big gap down. Um, the resistance was perfectly in line with previous support. That was previous resistance back in there. This is a good place for that, for the horizontal line. Now you can see there's arrows. I don't use the arrows, honestly. What I will also use is rectangles. I may use a rectangle to demonstrate a bull put spread, or I might use a rectangle to demonstrate maybe like a bull call uh, debit spread. And then I might just change the color on that. So I know that's my debit spread. This is my credit spread. If you don't know what the spreads are yet, don't worry about it. It's okay. I just wanted to show you this so that you know that it's there. One other thing I want to go ahead and cover in this section. Actually, there's a, there's, there's a few things. Uh, we're going to talk about these boxes. You can see these boxes here. You might be thinking, Oh, they're all green. That looks kind of cool. Yeah, that is nice. Well, what do those boxes mean? Let's go ahead and look at the legend down below. If I click on this legend, it's going to give me the information I need. So the first box is technicals, right? And so um, it can either be positive, neutral, or negative. Now for technicals, we definitely want to get our eyes on the chart as well. Um, Technicals doesn't, you know, green technicals doesn't mean that's a pretty pattern. 
Um, it's just that the the technicals for the most part recently have been bullish. Inner circle is going to relate to the big boys and if they're invested or not, right? So green, yes, the big boys are in. Yellow, oh, they're kind of in. Or red, the big boys are not in. Valuation really has to do with, is the stock on discount? So if it's a green, then it's it's a good buy. doesn't mean that it's at a good buy point. doesn't mean that the chart is pretty. It just means that um, you could say that stock is on sale. If it's yellow, it's a fair price. And if it's red, then that means it's really overpriced. You're going to be paying uh, potentially too much for that stock if it's red valuation. The fundamentals box is probably my favorite box. This is going to give us a real just quick glance. And the platform does so much for us. Uh, you can look at so much fundamental analysis if you want. Um, or we can just keep it simple and look at this green, yellow, red. Pretty self-explanatory at this point. Good fundamentals, okay fundamentals, or not so great fundamentals. All right. Another way, another place you can look at the fundamentals right up here, these tabs. As I said before, there's a lot of information in the fundamentals. Right. And you can like we can click on growth. We can start looking at balance sheets and go six levels deep. And I think my head just started spinning. This is why I want to show you just the easy boxes first. Same with valuation. All kinds of information here. We can dive into this some other time. But for now, I just want to give you the the, the quick look. Inner circle. Same thing. All kinds of information you can look up. And then, of course, the charts. And I don't pay as much attention to the color of the, the, the chart because I want to see this myself. I just want to look at the chart myself and make my own decisions. This one, for example, very nice looking chart. So how I start to process this, my personal watch list here, you know, I might start with a David Mitchell watch list. And then I might... Um, look through these and start throwing out charts that I don't like. Ooh, what about this one? Toast, you know? This thing dropped significantly recently. If I don't want this on my watch list anymore, I can hover over it and click the little X that comes to the top right, and it'll get rid of toast. Now I can look at CPA. All right, that one's okay. I like that one. I'm going to keep that. Oh, this one's moving down, right? lower lows, lower highs. Maybe I want to get rid of that. We're not going to go through this whole list right now, but I just wanted to show you that process. But you can go through that whole list and you might take the 50 or 60 tickers and narrow it down to 20 really pretty patterns. Now, let's say you find a stock and um, let's pretend it's CrowdStrike, right? Like, oh, wow, this is a really pretty pattern. Maybe it's not on your watch list. Here's how we can quickly add it to the watch list. You know, come here, little sideways arrow, send the selected symbol to watch list. Click on that and then add to my favorite watch list. It's been added. I'm going to close this. And now I can come back to my favorite watch list. All right, uh, well, this is the end of the second tutorial. I recognize certain areas I might have gone through pretty quickly. Please go ahead and feel free to rewatch this. You can pause me at any time, of course, and just back it up 10 seconds. Oh, what do you say there? So um, I want this to be helpful for you as well. So rewatch it as many times as you need.